Elon and the BBC guy? I did. I posted oh. it today. On oh, Twitter. you did? It was amazing. Amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Because the guy kept trying to change subjects and let's move on. Like, no, 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 no. What, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you talking about? Because that guy thought he could just say the narrative without specific examples. Like, give me an example. And the guy had no examples. That's most people who are yes. concerned about this. Well, this is like a lot of people that I know that are famous that like publicly announced they were leaving Twitter. And, you know, one of them I really love. And I was like, why are you doing it? I didn't even say anything to her, but I'm like, why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. This is so dumb. Like, you, you're just doing this because this is the thing that everyone feels like they're supposed to do. Hey, well, Twitter's kind of fucked now, so bye. No, it was fucked before. It's less fucked now. Yeah, there, are there people that are going to say things like what I showed you earlier today, which is hilarious, and someone posted to Kamala Harris uh, oh, after yeah, yeah, she yeah, said yeah. something about the assault ban? That shit's important. It's important to have people mock people. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry if it hurts someone's feelings, but that shit's important. Yeah, and I, I, I think the way that Elon handled that was great because obviously you need a specific example to back up an argument. However, I sort of think the whole premise of the conversation is wrong. This idea, this war that Twitter is at with all the think tanks, and I think it was the Institute for Strategic Discourse that had actually compiled the information that the BBC guy was talking about. And there is information there. There is data showing, you know, hate speech, X, Y, Z has increased. However, this is the wrong conversation. It's not... The existence or even rise of hate in the, the the presence of that content on an app is not you, you're not just trying to ban hate. Banning hate does not stop hate. And this is what the peer reviewed research shows. So so trying to bully Elon and Twitter for look, even if there was a bump of hate speech since it became a little bit more free. I mean, it seems like that's a, a potentially understandable intermediary effect to happen while things reorient. Mm-hmm. Like we open up free speech, we're open up the valve a little bit, okay? Because we think that this is going to be healthy for society long term. So let it bump a little bit. We need that. We need to see what we hate or what other people hate. You need to like, what is it? Um, Free speech let us lets us know who the idiots are. Like you, you mm-hmm. need to identify them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the best response to whatever it is, bad speech is better speech, is better arguments, and that's you. You literally have a debate platform, which is what Twitter essentially is. Yeah, that is yeah. the purpose. Yeah, it's the purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and not to mention that the hate isn't defined, so it's only one type of hate that these people are typically referring to right-wing hate right-wing hate yeah not, not left wing right hate. that's yeah. that's okay and so actually so um we're at, we're suing california we just filed this law because the um this uh complaint they are trying to pass this social media law called ab 587 which requires it's a censorship law they're, they're they require these policies on disinformation misinformation hate speech and then they use the Undefined, use the words extremism and radicalization. There's no definitions. They don't require you to have a, a, a child exploitation material policy, but they do require you to have a policy on hate, which isn't defined. Right. And so we're suing them with um, with the Babylon Bee and and Tim Pool. When did they start this? Uh, when when they start trying to pass this? It just went into effect in January. So it's now. It's now. It's in. So if you live in California, what's the repercussions? So it is it's it's targeted at social media companies. Okay. So basically mandating that social media companies um, have the submit these policies. So we would have to we would they would force us to write a policy on hate speech and submit it to them. And then additionally, we we would have to on like a biannual basis submit analytics about all of our moderation data. Which honestly, we're already transparent about our moderation data, so that's that's largely public anyway. We have a jury system, um, and and we have in-house moderators. But the, the it's it's just it's a huge burden. Like it's crazy that they would expect companies to submit all that and then have ar- these arbitrarily, well, actually not arbitrarily, specifically chosen categories for policies that are clearly politically charged. And Newsom, like when he came out and announced this law, 
it was very, you know, we have to stop hate on social media and misinformation and disinformation, protect society, protect democracy. No, you know, you're not protecting democracy by stopping free speech. That right, is there's no there's no checks and balances in place if something turns out to be accurate. 